Hey, good morning, afternoon, or evening, you guys. So good to be back with you. And I see Yvette is with us. Hey, and you're having a lovely summer day in the UK. That's awesome. What a beautiful place, especially when the sun comes out. So that's great. And I look forward to seeing your guys' photographs. We're going to get into that in just a second. So give us a shout out as you guys arrive. I'd love to see where you are in the world and hear from you. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to talk to you about one of my photos here in a minute that I, uh, I take a lot of photos with my iPhone. And it's, you know, it's an important camera or smartphone, whichever phone you use. They're all really good, let's face it. But um I'll give you some tips here in a minute. I'm actually putting together a uh, iPhone tip uh, document. So that'll be coming your way pretty soon. Hey, it's rainy in India. Okay. Wow, it's amazing. What time is it there, by the way? Kind of lose track of the time zones. I know, Yvette, you're uh, nine hours ahead, I think. So it's seven o'clock. Your time? Uh, could be, I think. In, could be eight. It, it could be for like 10, 30 p.m. or around that time, depending on where in India they are. But pretty late. So glad you're joining us. Yeah, thanks for joining in. So uh, that's a place I need to travel. I'm, you're on my list for sure. 6 p.m. Oh, surprising. Okay. And 1030. Jared, you were, you're about right there. Nailed yeah, it. Thank, thanks <laughs> thank for you, staying, Google. <laughs> yeah, thanks for staying up late and tuning in with us. Uh, by the way, will you guys do something for me? Will you just, I know you like what we're doing, so would you hit the like button? Uh, you know, what it does is it helps other people see this on their feed, and, you know, we love having a, a large audience, so if you guys don't mind, just just go ahead and like it, even though we haven't done anything yet, but just chat here for a second. It's uh, it's definitely uh, helpful. Yes, I know I am invited and I want to go there and it will be it will be someday. I can't tell you when right now, but it will be happening. So thanks for those likes. And also while we're talking about it, remember to subscribe and enable the bell because you don't want to miss. We're bringing out, you know, some cool stuff, and we're definitely going to head into a new summer season here with some surprises for you guys. We actually have, right, for a Saturday, unreleased footage from our friend Bob Holmes coming your yes. way. So step, definitely stay tuned for that. That's coming your way on Saturday, right, Jared? Yep, it's a video that has not been uh, released before on the channel. So Kind of amazing. And... Juniper, you're in the cloudy part of the UK. Okay, cool. Where is that? Um, I travel all around the UK and I always like to know where you're from. Okay, well, listen, why don't we just get started here? So I'm going to just do a little this and that. So I'm Mark Silver. I'm a photographer. I'm an author. <laughs> These are my cameras to prove it, and I'm an educator. I love, I really do love to teach, and I've been in a teaching role my whole life, starting when I was 19 years old as a young mountaineering instructor. And believe me, when you're teaching mountaineering, people really have to pay attention. It's not like you're going to miss a, a photograph. It's like you could break a leg or get hurt or whatever. So I learned the value of teaching early on, and I pretty much have had that as a, a role in my life. Now this, uh, that's not what we want. I'm sorry, we're on the wrong screen here, pressing all these magical buttons. Uh, the show is brought to you by our friends at Bay Photo Lab. I love what they do. You can get acrylic prints for 20% off. Those are really cool. You can get 15% off. This is the last day. It expires today on metal prints, and they're really awesome. And as always, you get 25% off on your first order. You guys have heard me say this. You've got to make prints. You've got to make prints. You've got to make prints because that's how you really see what your photograph looks like. And in our class on AYP+, I encourage that. And people, I don't care if you're printing on a home printer. 
a test print, that's fine. You can do that. But definitely when you get around to really great prints, send them out to a reputable lab, and Bay Photo is definitely that. I've used them for years. They'll give you great customer service and give you great prints. Okay, well, first thing I'm going to talk about is one of my photos here. This is a photograph I took. Um, this, if you don't know where that is, that's in Wyoming, uh, the Grand Teton National Park, which I've been to for many years. Speaking of mountaineering instructing, this was, um, this was a destination for me, again, as a 19-year-old instructor. Between courses, I actually hitchhiked over there. We used to hitchhike around a lot. In fact, that was my main mode of transportation. You don't do that so much today. But I hitchhiked over there and climbed around these mountains and then went down to southern Colorado to teach a, a, a series of classes. This photograph was not taken back in the day. This was last year. And this photograph was captured with an iPhone 7. I'm using it you know, sometimes that's the only camera you have. Now, the thing is, I actually did have another camera with me. I don't remember exactly why I used the iPhone, and I was using an, an Olympus, um, uh, and I don't know why I didn't shoot with that, but for whatever reason, I did. And listen, a camera is a camera. You have to respect whatever camera you have. And the most important thing about your photography isn't isn't really the camera. I mean, you have to know how it works. That's important. But it isn't the camera that takes photographs. It's you. And we don't take photographs anyway. We make them. So, you know, this photograph has compositional elements in it. Obviously, it has a leading line. It has a, it's not really a leading line. It's more of a diagonal line cutting through with the fence. It does lead your eye over to the peaks um, and it does another thing. It does a couple of things. So it has a diagonal line, but also makes a triangular area. Triangles are really a strong composition element. And in fact, I'm just going to get my little cursor here. So you've got a lot of triangles going on. The whole mountain range itself is very triangular. And of course, these peaks are triangular. This is in my book, um, The Secrets of Photo Composition. And then you have a triangle being formed here with the fence. So there's a lot of triangles in, in this photograph, which I think help add to its interest. I did process this. There's hardly a photo. There actually are no photographs I don't process. And I photographed this with the iPhone, and then I processed it later um, with Silver FX Pro. And by the way, I'm going to be giving a webinar uh, at the end of the month you can put it down on your calendar. It's free. You should go sign up for it. I'll tell you when it is. Let me just pull up my calendar. I think it's the 24th, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, 24th. And it looks like it's 10 a.m. Pacific time. But if you want to find that, maybe, Jared, you could even find the link for it and put it in there. But um, that's yeah, from see DX, I find it. DXO Labs. If you probably... Google DXO Labs and Mark Silver. Anyway, I'm going to be going over my use of Silver Effects Pro. It's, to me, the best way to process black and white images, period. And I've used a lot of different tools. So there you go. Use your any camera, but it's really about your composition tools. It's about lighting. It's about the basics of photography. You know, this morning I was thinking... Learning photography isn't about a bunch of gimmicks. And I, I, there are a lot of gimmick videos out there. Hey, you, did you know you could do this and that? And you could smear a little, you know, Vaseline on your lens and make it look blurry. And you can, okay, how often are you really going to use those things? What you're going to use constantly, constantly, are the basics of art. You're going to use those no matter what camera you're capturing with. The basics of art are what we really need to be concentrating on, and that's what I do concentrate on. And that comes from a study of art, understanding it, like the compositional tools, understanding light, where is light entering, 
How are you using it? Understanding maybe the most important thing, and I did a podcast talking about this, is your relationship with your subject. And really, I'm talking about people, but it's also your, your subject, uh, your mountains. You know, it could be an inanimate subject. Do you relate to it? Because if you're kind of removed and not really involved, it's going to show up in your photographs. Communication is that magical element. And, you know, the first thing a photographer needs to be able to do is be in good communication with their environment and the subject. That's covered in my classes. And I mean that. You cannot just be an outside observer. You have to be involved. You have to be active as a photographer, not passive. And that means move around until you get the, you know, the composition that you want. Don't rely just on cropping or your zoom lens. Move with your feet. Crop with your feet. Get involved. Move back. Move up. Whatever. If you're photographing people, engage them. Talk to them. I'm not talking about street photography here. I'm talking about you're out shooting an environmental portrait, let's say, or you're just photographing your friends or family or whatever. Don't be afraid to you know, engage with them. Have them move a little bit. If you want the sun hitting the back of their head and you want backlighting and you, you can't move to the right spot, ask them, hey, just move over one foot this way. Bam! All of a sudden, the, the light is, you know, it's just a perfect backlit silhouette. But that comes from you being active as a photographer. What do you guys think? Give me a, give me a holler. Be active right now. And if you haven't hit the like button, do so. And I'll just remind everybody, since there's more of you guys here, just remember to subscribe and enable the bell. Okay, well, we're going to look at your photos now. So let's jump in, and Jared has some ready to go. Tell us what we're looking at, Jared. Oh, I wonder if you're not on the audio here. No, it was me. I had oh, muted okay. myself while I was typing. Uh, All right. And I forgot to unmute thing. myself. Uh, and just as a quick reminder, if anybody doesn't already know or they've forgotten, um, I did put in the chat the link where you can join the AYP club, which is where we're taking these photos from. So feel free to submit. Uh, even if you haven't joined it yet, it's not too late because I keep an eye on the AYP club uh, during the show. So cool. be sure to submit your photos. So this one is from our friend uh, Lucian. And let me see. So this is the Seven Sisters Cliffs. That's really cool. Where is that, Lucian? You know, I, here, I there's a lot of things I like about this photograph. I love the the leading line that just takes your eyes, you know, along the coastline there, and then the wandering, um, different depths of water providing a different color, uh, you know, of the water itself. And there's a lot of texture on the water. It looks like you use a longer exposure so that, you know, the wind is actually blowing and it's kind of smoothing out the water. It's very cool. Um, and there's a tiny little outcrop there at the end of, you know, where your eye is really being directed to that topmost outcrop. And there's a tiny little something poking its way up there. I don't know if it's a tree, but that's, that's very cool. And it's got a lot of subtle colors to it. Um, I would love to hear exactly where that is that you photograph, but good. Um, it's in England is where the seven sisters okay. is, which okay. I was thinking that was the case. Cause I know Lucien lives this in white, that part of the world. Yeah. White cliffs of Dover. Is that part of that? No, it's the seven sisters cliffs. Okay. Um, well, I'm just wondering, maybe that's part of the same geographic area. I'm not really familiar. They're cliffs with. over by the English channel. Okay. Uh, right. down uh, they form part of the South Downs and East East Sussex. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Uh, now so I know in, in that kind of area, if anybody's yeah. familiar where. I'm very familiar with is. Sussex, and now I know where this is. Okay. Good one. Yes. Make sure you put right. it. Okay. Uh, this one is from Amir, and this one is titled Fields. Yeah, okay, look at all the uh, diagonal lines, leading lines, um, <clears throat> with the, yeah, the rows of crop. Also, there's this trench line that kind of forms an interesting line there. And, of course, the uh, sprinklers, that's very cool. I, I really like that. 
Um, you know, it'd be really cool if you had a, a worker walking in the middle. I mean, obviously, they're not going to be walking around during the sprinkling, <laughs> so that's unlikely. But um, yeah, and the sky is the sky is very interesting. Backlit sunset. You know, you waited around for the sun to go down, and there's a lot of color in the sky. That's a very interesting photograph. The diagonal lines make it really interesting, and the spray of the sprinkler. And I see this as part of a story. You know, you might have other photographs, for instance, of workers. Um, you, you guys know, I mean, I really like to put people in photographs or or some life form. Other, than, I mean, you, you have plants, but um, an animal, a deer, a bird, whatever. And, you know, sometimes that's just not available and sometimes it is. But this form, I see this as forming part of another uh, story, perhaps about this farmland. So good one. All right. Our next one, this is from our good friend Robin. And this is part of, he's been doing quite a few photos um, exploring uh, surfing. So this is another Pleasure Point beach shot. Boy, uh, I know so that spot. Said, yeah, I knew that you, you know that spot very well. Uh, so he said, I was born and raised in California, but I never learned to surf or even skateboard. The surf culture fascinated me, so I would frequently visit this spot just trying to capture the essence of this lifestyle from an outsider perspective. And so he's got several really good photos yeah, that's very um, cool. of this. So I encourage anybody, if you're part of the AYP club, go over there and check out some of Robin's photos. Well, you know... As I said, a photograph is a communication, and for me, this communicates a lot. I know exactly what this spot is, where it is. The green moss on that rock is slippery, and you got to avoid it. And these guys are carrying their boards, looking out. Not a very big day. It's a very small day. Those are tiny waves by comparison. But they're, I think they're kind of looking and making up their mind if they even want to paddle out because it is very small, but sometimes that's all you've got. I can't tell you what a thrill it is, you guys. If you haven't surfed, it is one of the most thrilling things you can do because you're riding on a wave, in a wave, and you're riding in an environment where there's lots of life. You know, there's sea otters out there, there's seals, there's dolphins, there's fish, there's um, birds there's kelp, there's all this stuff. And then there's a lot of camaraderie and interactivity that goes on amongst surfers. There's, you, you could be next to somebody you've never met and you, it's like they're your old friend. Anyway, this photograph for me brings out all those different um, elements, which is a, a really cool thing. I like the, you know, the fact that you have, um, kind of a muted sky I and mean, you've done something with the processing everything is the colors are pretty muted and i i like the fact that we're looking through these guys viewpoint chris burkhart said you know a lot of times you want to look at what your subject is looking at and that's what we're doing and i you know i like the diagonal line going with the surfer on the right um and that adds an interesting element because it can it kind of brings connection between the two surfers so that's a good one. Keep going with that story. In our AYP Plus community, where uh, everybody is working on their stories, and uh, you know, if you're not in there, you should join it and make this part of your story. I would love to see this unfold for you, because I know you've already been doing it, and we could just see more of it. So good one. Okay. As much All as right. I like to keep looking at it, who is next? <laughs> All right, our next one is this is Jaya Krishna um, and there's no caption that comes with this one but I, I it uh, looks like it was a framed photo you can't see it because it was framed in white yeah so it blends in oh I see but, um, framed on the wall okay that's very cool geometry well no I mean like it, it was yeah. a, a framed photo but the frame is white around the no, edge I get it. it which is great and I applaud you for doing that of course I love the geometry in it. I mean, that's spectacular. Um, and then you have a person. You know, if we took that person out of the photograph, it, it really wouldn't have a lot of meaning, would it? It'd just be kind of like some shapes. But because they're leaning 
against the wall and there is an expression there that adds so much to the photograph. There's something, you know, very interesting because it draws your eye, the, these geographic, geographic, uh, geometric, <laughs> geometry shapes lead your eye into basically that, you know, that frame where the, where the person is leaning. And it's interesting, their, their lean has a kind of a meaning to it. It's sort of like they're, there's something going on there. It's interesting and intriguing. And uh, with all the, you know, the black negative space, it definitely just draws your eye right in. But there's a lot of mystery sort of also surrounding it, like with this line on the right-hand side. Uh, yeah, that kind of is another leading line, just bringing your eye in. So that's it's got a lot working for it. And I'm glad you framed it. Well done. Keep doing that. Keep getting prints and putting them on the wall. All okay. right. Uh, here's one from Paul Gray. And uh, the caption with this was Sweet Season. Interesting. And it's interesting that you chose black and white. I don't know if that's because you maybe are just primarily a black and white photographer, because obviously there's a lot of color with those butterflies. You know, so what we're seeing is we're not seeing the color. We're seeing the more of a design element of the butterflies themselves. And your choice of a selective focus, it works well because the, you know, the larger uh, butterfly is out of focus and we're primarily seeing this one on the right in focus and the and the flowers that it's um, kind of hovering on or or sitting on or whatever it is. Anyway, it's an interesting photograph, but I am curious about your choice of black and white. If you want to put in the chat, you know, did you, do you photograph only black and white, or is this just because you decided to process it accordingly? So, yeah, good. All right, our next one. This is from our Australian friend, uh, Jennifer. And the story that came with this in Central Australia, rainfall is infrequent, and the sandy red soil is low in nutrients, so plants are finely adapted uh, for as survival opportunists. And so here at the Kajat, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, but uh, where she captured this image, it rained about six weeks ago, and since then the, spe the seeds have now sprouted. So these yeah. are all plants that have grown from a, a rainfall six weeks ago. So, okay, listen, uh, you know, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on here with the, with the red rock and the, uh, the plants. It's missing a story element, and you, this, is, this is an example of what I, you've heard me say. You know, you've got the stage set. Now we need something to happen. And there's a couple of ways you could make something happen here. You could wait for a person to walk into the frame. You could even arrange that. That would add a lot of interest, wouldn't it? Let's say there were there was a child walking into the frame touching the plants. I'm not saying you necessarily direct that, but I'm not saying you can't either. Or an animal. There needs to be some other element to make it into a story. Because without knowing what you just said, that there's not a lot of rainfall, I mean, I, I could kind of gather that. I don't, I don't get that as a story element. I'm just, I hear it and I see the evidence of that, but something else could bring that about. And this is, this is where oftentimes you guys, patience is the key thing for a photographer. You come across a scene like this and you go, wow, that's really cool. Now what? Now, now what we can, can we do? Or in the, in the case of Mads Iverson Peterson, he would walk into the frame. He just set his camera up on a tripod. And um, he'd probably walk very deep into the frame, but you would be able to see him. So he uses himself as his own uh, you know, focal point in the photograph. I just do believe, and I, I'm, this belief has changed a lot, but you're, you're going to have a more interesting photograph with another life form in it whether that's a deer or a bird, 
bird flying into the frame could be interesting, or a person. And again, the, you, you sometimes you come across a perfect setup and you just have to wait until it happens or make it happen, up to you. Okay. All right, who's next? All right, I was, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, if you guys haven't liked the video, I hope you do like it. And if you do, please hit your like button because that helps let other people know what we're doing. Okay. All right, our next one, I'm going to be taking a couple from uh, that have been submitted very recently in the AYP Club, even during the show. Okay. Uh, so our first one, this is from Yvette. Um, and so she said, I just want to show why I'm a little slow in taking more photos recently. I'm working. I'm very busy working uh, in care as in care homes as a senior uh carer and activity coordinator uh if i if i could use my camera i would be able to get a lot more portraits unfortunately we are not allowed only their phone uh we they can only have their phones uh so okay uh this is one of the photos that she took at the care home okay well is it with her phone. Uh, is it a lot if you're allowed to use your phone that's fine are you allowed to take pictures of the people in the care home because that would make a very interesting photograph um, you know, without it, it's, it's, uh, it's a snapshot. There's, there's, um, it's just recording something. There's no, there's no, nothing that draws my attention towards, uh, either decisive moment or a composition. So you're showing this as an illustration, which I get, but can you use, can you, t oh, you can. Okay. Well then that, that kind of rules that out. Well, Thank you for telling us what you're doing. I guess you're just gonna have to turn somewhere else to create a story. I I don't know. I mean, I suppose there's a way to turn this into an interesting story. I don't know exactly what it would be. It would probably, you'd probably have to get down really low, for instance, maybe if you just almost lay on the ground and maybe shot upwards, that could be interesting of that. I'm just kind of guessing here. But Yvette, um, if you can't, I would say take your camera elsewhere and look for the story. Because really at the end of the day, that's what we're looking for. This could be, if you could tell the story about where you're working, this could be a part of that, a transitional photograph perhaps. But by itself, it, it just doesn't give us enough to, to go with. So go somewhere else. And that's just part of being a photographer. If you're limited, um, you know, in your environment, then pick another environment, go somewhere else. Uh, need more focus capturing. I'm not quite sure. Do you mean? I think I think more like focus on like the capturing, as in like taking photos and stuff. Yeah, just do it. I mean, that's that's what we do. Just get out there and you know, use your camera on the way to work if you're walking or you know, after work, outside, whatever. Just just get out there and photograph. Just keep doing it. That's, that's, practice is the key to the whole, any art form, any skill. Boy, learning to surf, boy, do you have to practice a lot. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, okay. we've seen some great photos from people that have taken photos on their way to and from work or even on the bus. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, don't, so don't hesitate to do that. Okay, good. We'll take a few more here. All right, uh, this one is from Manat, our friend in India who's joining us, and thank you for joining us on AYP Club. Um, these wow. are some self-portraits uh, that she took recently on her iPhone. That's a gorgeous photograph, and I didn't, I wouldn't have guessed it is a self-portrait. I mean, that's pretty remarkable. Just, uh, you know, obviously you've done some processing. Those eyes are amazing and the you know they're being mirrored by the lights very you know very intriguing uh self-portrait the the colors the angle of your head um but really the eyes you know that's why pictures of photograph of people you know you connect with their eyes we always connect with people's eyes or animals for that matter so i'd be 
again, I'd love to see you in AYP Plus so we could see a story or your project develop around this because I think that's very interesting. We have another person in our group who is actually only doing self-portraits and a few others who are adding self-portraits. Um, and it's an interesting way to create a project. So thank you for submitting. Well done. Actually, speaking of that, I do have one of Amy's because she put it in the AYP club and I oh, thought yeah. it was too much. I know that we have reviewed yeah. it already, but I really wanted to show it because it was it's yeah, such a good Amy, image. Amy really did a great job. I mean, look at the Joker. She's using these cards that had been punched with punched holes in them to make a Joker mask on her face. Very clever. And, um, you know, it's a very, very clever self-portrait. Very cool. Yeah, Manon, so, uh, Jared, you could probably even put a link there. Yeah, or... I just put the link in. Okay, good. Uh, while yeah. you're talking. So if you're interested yes. in AYP+, Plus, you can check it out. Uh, there we do weekly classes. Um, and you can get access to all previous classes, and we're currently working on projects. So. And one of the differences, big differences, so one, we're, we're working with a set group, you know, where we're watching their photographs evolve, and we also have, it's done on Zoom, so we can open up the microphone and have a discussion, and there's a lot of um, interactivity with the community itself, so it's, it's, a, it's a pretty cool platform it takes what we're doing here much deeper and over a long period of time all right let's do one or two more and then we'll yeah um, we've got another one from uh another new member so welcome to the group um this is from uh normal and this was taken on a phone in a uh, mumbai local train very interesting so I'm just trying to see. I mean, I'm okay. I see what's going on. We're looking at a cab driver. And no, no. What are we looking? No, at? this is on a train. On a train. Okay. Yeah, I saw the window. I didn't. I don't. I don't. I mean, it's intriguing because I don't really know what's happening. That's okay. You don't have to know what's happening. Obviously, there's some sort of screening thing that's causing the uh, shadowing. Yeah. On. It's a very interesting photograph. Very interesting photograph. And the interest is a huge factor, let's face it, because it makes you stop and look. And that's not, that's certainly what we want in our photographs. We want people to stop and look. So that's good, great. And a lot of the, you know, obviously, a lot of the black space creates mystery and draws us in. Um, you know, we have the open window on the left which does pull my eye over, but I don't find it really pulling me out of the frame. And there's no real way you'd want to crop that out because that that is part of the, the whole imagery there. So, okay, good. All right. We'll and do maybe then, one or two more. Yeah, here's one. Uh, this is from uh, Shang Guru, Guri. Sorry about your name. I usually like to get most of these pronunciations ahead of time. Um, but this is taken in Melbourne, Australia. Okay. <laughs> and uh, they took, so as a newcomer, here's one roll from, uh, of Porta 800. I took two days ago. Feel free to share your ideas and critiques. Um, they shot on a Pentax uh, 67.2 with 75 millimeter and 105 millimeter lenses. So I don't know what this specific one was, but okay. So these were all shot in Melbourne. <clears throat> yeah, it's got a lot of interesting stuff going on with the lights and the reflection. Um, there is a guy. There's a subject moving in the frame on the left, but I can't quite see what's going on. I don't I believe quite... they are an emergency person with this because it looks like they have an emergency vest. That's yeah. that's my interpretation at least. So you know here's what you've got. You've got a really interesting frame going on, but we don't quite have the subject captured in a way that we can tell that that has meaning. So it's just sort of there's a bit of a blurry object there. I would I would say you've got you've got some, you got the stage set like I mentioned earlier. You have the stage set. 
you keep photographing until there's a decisive moment or something happens. Maybe he's right next to the vehicle and he hands off something because there's a lot of interest there. There's a lot of the reflection of the light and the people in the back of this vehicle or what I think that's people in the back, whatever it is, there's stuff in the back, the red light, you know, that's very dominant and significant, but we need something to pull it all together. And that's, you know, that's what we call the decisive moment. You wait for that moment. You stand there, just don't go anywhere. Maybe it'll take a half an hour. Maybe it'll take an hour for that moment to, you know, to materialize. You're not going to direct these people and say, hey, would you mind standing over there? You're not going to do that. So you have to just really wait. And that's a big skill that we have to remember. In our fast age of everything being instant and fast and, you know, bam, 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 you know, we can forget that we got to slow down sometimes and just stand there and let the let the magic unfold. That was something that um, Ed Koshy mentioned. You've got to let the magic unfold, which is pretty cool. What about rule of thumb? I'm not sure. Probably thirds, maybe. Um, so, you know, it's not a rule, first of all. It's a guideline, and you can use it to help you with some images really work with it, and some don't. You know, it's again, it's not a rule. It's something you use or not. The most important thing here is it is some kind of element that pulls it all together with the, with your subject. Okay, you're very welcome. I hope that helps. And all right. maybe one last one. Jim? Yeah, I think I got one more. That would be a good one to end off on. This is from Peter Peter Nelson, and he took this at a blues performance. So this is a woman singing the blues. And is that, I'd be curious if it's recent, you know, things are opening up. I'd, I'd be interested to hear about that. Yeah, that's a strong image. You know, a lot of emotion going on there with the woman. Um, you framed her well against, you know, really a black background, dark background, dark purple, it probably looks like because of the lighting and whatnot. And she's got that, you know, angle going with her arm with both arms, you know, we've got angles in, in diagonal lines help you bring about uh, vitality and strength. And, you know, it's a dynamic gesture. So that helps the mood. In my book on composition, I talk about mood lines, which basically the lines themselves can help you convey an emotion. And she's using mood lines. I mean, that's because she's singing and it's actually what's coming out of her but in your photograph you've captured it well so good job all right okay well i think that's our last one right jared oh uh, yeah so i want to thank you guys i hope that i hope my comments help that's all i ever try to do is tell you what i see and give you feedback that i believe will be helpful so if you like it uh you know Please do join us on AYP Plus because we're we're doing this on a much more intensive, continuous basis, and I'd love to see people develop projects because that is the big secret to elevating your photography, is is putting projects, you know, putting your work there and just continue to follow it up, even if you don't feel like it, even if you're tired, even if you just feel bored or you're just not inspired you still got to follow that project and that's what pros do you know that's that's how pro photographers advance their photography they've got to go out and capture the goods so i'm trying to bring that about in that ayp plus environment all right well listen uh, so it's the news tomorrow i'm sorry saturday right bob holmes unreleased footage yep. Uh, my workshop on the 24th, and Jared did put the link in there. That would be great to have yep, you guys Yep, and we'll be putting us. it on our social media as well. So put that down on your calendar and register for it. I've done a number of uh, recent podcasts, and Jared is also, I believe, releasing those on our social media so you can tune in. You know, every podcast is a little different. I don't know what questions they're going to ask me. I don't. I mean, I have certain things I talk about a lot, but 
the the interviewer is the one that guides it and and they have different questions so it's kind of fun to hear a different take and different set of questions and you know from each each podcast so you you guys can certainly check those out um okay can you say some simple tips for newcomers in photography absolutely follow your passion number one like what are you passionate about what do you what do you want to tell a story about when i learned photography that's all i really i didn't know a lot about photography so it was all guided by my interest and i i did come away with some really good photographs of my friends and classmates because i was interested in what they were doing and i just got there you know i really put on there's a concept of wearing a hat you know as a as in a given profession it comes from the idea like on a railroad you have the engineer wears a hat and the conductor wears a hat and you know in the days back when nurses would wear a certain hat and firemen wear a hat it's, it's their role it's their profession and you have to put your hat on as a photographer this isn't necessarily the hat i photograph with but what that means is you have to be a photographer. Don't be a tourist. Don't be an, a bystander. Don't be somebody doing snapshots. Be a photographer. And that's the best advice I can give you and follow your passion. How's that? And notice I didn't say anything about your camera settings or gear or geeky stuff. That isn't, that isn't what moves your photography. What moves your photography is being involved and being passionate and again wearing that hat as a photographer i hope that helps so thanks guys for joining us don't forget to subscribe and enable the bell like and share and don't forget don't forget <laughs> to capture your own images of life stay safe Stay creative, and we'll see you guys next week. Take care. Thanks for joining us. Love you guys.